So can you see the empty slide? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, I'm a, a, in chapter two, example two point ten. Did we solve yes. already? Yes, yes. So we may start at compass liquid two point eleven eleven. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll post that question onto the slide. Can you see the question? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, we will discuss this question right away. Okay. So here we are told that to determine the specific internal energy of compressed liquid water at 80 degrees Celsius and five megapascal using data from compressed liquid table and then using data from saturated liquid table then we have to find the differences so now what we will do is that we are told the type of fluid is compressed liquid so let's assume we have um, our thermodynamic system over here. Okay, so it contains a um, fluid whose temperature is 80 degrees Celsius, and then pressure equals to five megapascal. Okay, so you um, in, see initially. Even if you are not told that the fluid is compressed liquid, we can find a way to determine the state of the fluid by first determining the saturation temperature. If you find T saturation at the given pressure at P equals to five megapascal, okay? What is going to be the saturation temperature? Can anybody find out from us? Anybody with a property table, you go to the property table at water, using water and saturation uh, table, pressure, sorry, pressure table at five megapascal, what is the corresponding T saturation? Anybody can help us? What is the T saturation there? Thirty-two point X seven. How much? Come again. Come again. How much? Or you can type it on the WhatsApp.
Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, okay. somebody has given us the solution. Yes, so that equals to okay, two six three point nine four. Okay, so this gives us and uh, this indicates that uh, let's see the temperature the T saturation is greater than the temperature given. Okay, so this indicates that uh, the fluid is indeed the compressed liquid state. Because if we draw the, let's say, the PV diagram, okay, oh sorry, the TV diagram, we have a situation like this. Okay. This is the constant them a pressure line and T saturation, T saturation corresponds to this, this state. Okay, so this is our T saturation. This equals to 263.94 okay, degrees Celsius. So the given temperature is over here. So T equals to 80 degrees Celsius. So we say that since Let's say since T is less than T saturation implies fluid equals to compressed liquid state. So if this is the case, then we need to go to the compressed liquid table. So at the compressed liquid table, we will go to pressure of 5 megapascal and temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we will determine the internal energy at that portion. So please go to the property table again and under pressure of 5 megapascal for water. Okay, pressure of 5 megapascal at 80 degrees Celsius. What is the uh, internal energy over there. So from the compressed liquid table, we will have U equals to, anybody? So you go to the property table at compress liquid table for water and five megapascal. So what is the value for you? Compressed 
Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, have you found it? Wait. Can you get a compressed liquid table? Yes. Uh, we use saturated water on pressure table, right? You said? Pressure table, right? Yes, pressure table, compressed liquid, not saturated, compressed liquid for water. You go to the compressed liquid table. Let me see. Table I, what? Table A7. What? Table A7. Yes. Is it written there, compressed liquid? So if we delay like this, then there will be a problem. So you cannot find it, right? Yes, sir. Three, three, three point eight. Is what? Three, three, three point eight two. H three. Eight two. I can't hear you well. Maybe okay. Three, 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 three point eight two. All right, all right. I got it. Thank you. Okay, so we have it. To be this. And then, so that's the solution for the A part. So data from compressed liquid table. Now, we have to find using similar concept this time we will go to the saturated liquid data. Okay, then we'll find the internal energy over there. Saturated liquid data means that this portion. See over here. The one that you have given to me now is in this region. This is U. And then we are going to read UF at 80 degrees Celsius. So tell me what will be UF at 80 degrees Celsius. So UF at 80 degrees Celsius. Okay, that equals to 334.97. Three four three four three three four. Oh, sorry, three three four point nine nine seven. Yes. So this is what we are interested in now. The units is in kilojoules per kilogram. This is also kilojoules per kilogram. Now let us find the difference. Say, uh, which one is the highest now? We have. Oh, what I did here was wrong. So the temperature here is supposed to be. Sorry. This was the initial one was this. Okay. So let us find the difference between the two. It is going to give us U, let's say U minus UF. So this will give us about, uh, let me see, oh sorry, it should be instead UF minus UF. UF minus U. That gives us 
uh, three, three, four point nine seven. Divided, sorry, minus three, three, three point eight two. So this gives me, this gives me five. This gives me one, and this gives me one. So you see the difference. So the difference is one point one five. So what I want you to know over here is that whenever you want to determine any property, either water or refrigerant, if the fluid happens to be in the compressed liquid region, okay, you can also approximate it and take its property at the saturated liquid state. So the difference is not so big. So if you take all the properties, either the internal energy at this state, the entropy at this state, the entropy at this state, the result is going to be approximately the same. Okay, so this indicates over here that UF is approximately equals to U. Okay, so in future, if you want to solve any question involving either refrigerant or water, and you want to determine uh, you have the fluid to be in the compressed liquid state, immediately go to the property table and find the property of the fluid at the uh, saturated liquid state. Okay, so but be careful over here. The U, you see, we found UF at the given temperature, not at the given pressure. If you find UF at a given pressure, the difference is going to be very big. And there will be error in your solution. You understand me? So we always refer to UF at a given temperature, not at a given pressure. Somebody will say, say, why we don't take UF at the given pressure, which equals to five megapascal. If you use this method, then the difference between this UF and this U is going to be very big and there will be error. So you see over here, when we took only the temperature, the error was very, very, very small. Okay, so that is the explanation to this particular question. Okay, let's move on to another example. So if you have any problem, please you inform me immediately. Again, I have a table over here. Let me copy this table. Yes. So, Aima, can you see the table? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, here we have been told to fill in the following table. Okay. So, let's say we take uh, number one. We have pressure is given in this table. Internal energy is also given. I want to find the temperature of the fluid. Okay, and then we want to find what is the phase description. All right, so <clears throat> complete the following table for water. So that's the main question. Okay. OK, 
Okay, so quickly let us solve this. So here we have pressure is giving. Uh, pressure 140 kilopascal. And internal energy, U equals to 1450 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so we want to find the, the temperature of the fluid and then we want to determine also the phase. Okay, so those are. Measure 400, sir. What? Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Measure 400. Yes, yes, yes. So this is 400. I'm very sorry. So this is 400. This is 400 kilopascal. Okay, so now, first thing to start with this type of question like this, we. We have already been giving, I've told you before you start any thermodynamic question. First, we need to identify two independent intensive properties. So these two independent intensive properties are already given. Pressure is one of them, internal energy is one of them. So now we need to determine the state of the fluid. How do we determine the state of the fluid? We know the pressure, we know the internal energy. Okay. So we are going to look for UF at 400 kilopascal and then UG at 400 kilopascal. Then we will compare with this U. If it so happens that this UF is, let's say, less than this U, but <clears throat> UG is greater than it, then to be saturated liquid vapor mixture. So depending on the situation, first, let us find what is UF at 400 kilopascal. Somebody can quickly find and then just write for me and then I will uh, copy. 8 0 Okay. And then two five five three point two, one five five three point one. Yes. This one is said C zero four point two two. Is it? Yes, sir. C zero four point two two. Oh, sorry. Six zero four point two two. So now, if we compare our internal energy, it is greater than this value. It is less than this value. So we will have U is such a way that it is greater than U F K, and then it is less than. UG. So what will be the state of the fluid? Apply state of fluid. State of fluid. Zero. Equals to what? Zero. What? Yes, yeah, saturated liquid. Saturated liquid. Vapor mixture, right? Mm. So saturated vapor mixture. So if that is saturated vapor mixture, though then the question is very easy then. So if you draw, let's say we are looking for temperature. I've told you all the time, if we are looking for temperature, use the TV diagram. If you are looking for pressure, use the PV diagram. So I'm going to use temperature specific volume diagram. Okay. So this is my constant pressure line. Okay. So now... We have discovered that the state of our fluid is in this region, assuming it's in this box. Okay, so we want to determine the temperature that corresponds to this state. So cleverly, the temperature that corresponds to this state is going to be what? T what? T saturation at what? The given pressure. You understand? So that our T 
is nothing. T, the temperature equals to T saturation at, at the given pressure. So, so at P equals to uh, how much? 400 kilopascal. So what is the saturation temperature over here? Anybody? One, 143.61. 143.61. So that will be in degree Celsius. Okay, so that is the solution to the first part. Now the second part we are giving, temperature is giving, and the fluid is saturated vapor. So very easy. So temperature is 220. Okay, so this is number two. I, I, T equals to 220 degree Celsius. And then state of the fluid, this is saturated vapor, saturated vapor region. So now we are interested in what? We are interested in the pressure and then the internal energy at that state. Oh, very easy. See, so there will be, we will have a situation like this. So I've told you, if you are looking for pressure, we use what? PV diagram. See? So PV diagram. This way. So that gives us... Want to... Oh, so this is from. So PV diagram it should be different. Sorry. So it should be like this. So we have this. Okay. So um, the state of our fluid is saturated vapor. Saturated vapor means it is in this state. Okay. So it means we want to find the internal energy that corresponds to this region. So that gives us you what? You. G. Okay, and then the corresponding pressure that corresponds to this state is given P saturation. Okay, at the given temperature. Okay, so let us find first the pressure P equals to P saturation at 220 degrees. Oh, sorry. Yes, at 220 degrees Celsius. So how much is this? Yes, anybody? 2319.6. 2319.6 kilopascal. Okay, so now the same table, you'll go to UG at the given temperature. Okay, so at 220 degrees Celsius. What is the internal energy there? Yes. Yes. 2601.3. How much? 2601.3. Come again, 216. 2601.3. Point three. Okay, thank you very much, Ima. Okay, so this will be in kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so that's the solution to um, this question as well. Yeah, so now we move to the last part. Okay, the last, oh, sorry, we have the third one. So here we are giving 
temperature and pressure. Okay. 119 and 2500. Sorry, temperature across 119 and pressure across to 2500 degrees Celsius. So, uh, oh, sorry, this is in kilopascal. Very soft. So this gives us degrees Celsius. This is in kilopascal. So now uh, we need to determine the uh, internal energy and then the state of the fluid. Okay, first let us find the state of the fluid. Okay, there are two ways. Either you use, you find the saturation pressure and compare with this using the table, using the temperature, or you find the saturation temperature using the pressure given. Okay, so I always prefer to compare with the temperature. So let us find T saturation at 250, 2500 kilopascal. 2500 kilopascal is the same as. 2.5 mega pascal. So what is the T saturation there? So go to the property table. Two two three point nine. So two two three point nine. Nine five. Okay. Nine five. Point what? Nine five. Nine five. Okay. okay. Nine five. Okay. So that gives us in degrees Celsius. So now we compare with the temperature. Our T saturation is greater than T. Okay, so we have a situation like this. Let's see, we have a TV diagram. Okay, this is our constant pressure line. This is our T saturation. The saturation is this, okay, and then the temperature of the fluid given is in this region. So T equals to one nine degrees Celsius. So what will be the conclusion? What is the phase? Phase equals to compress. Compress. You see, this is compressed liquid region. Compress. So compress. So now we need to go to the compressed liquid table at 2,500 kilopascal. In other words, 2.5 megapascal. So go to 2.5 megapascal under this temperature, what is going to be the internal energy? So we'll look for the internal energy. So we are looking for this. You. How much? Two point five megapascal for water and temperature of one ninety. Do we need interpolation? Yes. Oh, okay. And let's see over here. Okay, so quickly let us do the interpolation. So the interpolation will have uh, temperature. 
and then I have internal energy. Okay. So let me see. We are looking for the internal energy. So I have one nine zero degrees Celsius. So what value should I write on top of one nine zero? One eighty. 150, how much? 180. 180. So what is the internal energy over there? For compress, Aima, and yes. the compress liquid table. Yes. So how much? Internal energy for 180. Yes. Uh, 759.47. 759. 4. 4. 4. 7. 4. 7. 4. 7. Okay. And then this should be 200, right? Yes, sir. Okay. How much? 847.92. 847.92. How much? 847 0.92. Thank you very much. So here we don't know the value for you, so we name it X. Right? Yes. So yes. now we will have the interpolation over here. So I'll take 200, 200 minus 190 divided by 200 minus 180. This should be equal to eight four seven point nine two minus x divided by uh, eight four seven point nine two minus seven five nine point four seven. So what is the value for x over here? Eight zero three point six nine five. Eight zero three point six nine five. Okay. Eight zero three point six kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. So this is the solution for this particular uh, question. So uh, another way in which we can determine this internal energy is that, pay attention carefully. So we can uh, approximate the fluid to be in the saturated liquid state. So then we will find the UF that corresponds to the given temperature. Okay? So let's say, I don't know if somebody can help me find UF, okay, at 
190 degrees Celsius. How much is that? You have. What is UF? UF at 190 degrees Celsius. So this is at saturated, sat you go to the saturated uh, liquid, okay? Saturated. So saturated liquid. Hello, sir. So what is the value for? Uh, let me see. Somebody has written the answer. Sir? How much? You go to saturated liquid temperature table. Find UF at 190. How much? 258. How much? 258989. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. 0. Two, two, you. How much? UG. What? FA Lapa. UG. How much? Can you write sorry, the sorry. answer for me? It's really heavy here. It's very difficult to see. Okay, let me see. Eight zero six point zero zero. Eight zero three. Eight zero six. Eight zero six point zero 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 kilojoules yes. per kilogram. So this is wrong. So you see now. So the difference between these two answers. So if I were to be you in exams, either you go for this or you go for this option, it's the same. You understand me? Provided the fluid is in a compressed liquid state. For all that, this is applicable only for compressed liquid state. So any other state, and such approximation is not applicable. So like we have, I have told you, UF is approximately equals to U. And this equals to 806.00 kilojoules per kilogram. So either you use this answer, or you use this answer, I'm going to, I'll give you the full mark. You understand? So these two answers, either this or this answer is correct. Okay? So uh, I'll move on to a different question. Okay? So today we'll solve a lot of questions before we proceed. Let me see if there is any other question. Oh, yes. So the, the last one, the last one, I leave it for you. Okay. So you can try your hands on it. Okay. Later, I'm going to give you some exercise related to uh, maybe table two or a different question. Okay. And it will be online. So I'll develop the question later online. And then you just submit the result. Okay. Which will be part of your uh, credit mark. Okay, so let me move on and let me see. We have problem, practice problem questions over here. I'll let you discuss. See, I have question.
So, someone wants to ask you a question. Love ya. Macam mana nak tanya, saya pun tak ada. Hilang je. <laughs> saya pun hilang ni, nak tanya siapa ni? Eh, asal guna lima MPA? Dah habis kelas ke? Dah habis kelas ke? Tahu advertisement ke? Break, break eh. Break ke? Dia pergi solat jawab. <laughs> eh, siapa, siapa, siapa tahu asal pakai lima MPA? Ya yeah, dah, aku tak tahu dah. Asal lah. Saya boleh sebelah ni. Ting baru ke?
Hello. Salam alaikum. So, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. okay. Sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, it's raining heavy, inshallah. So, my this thing, power was off. Immediately, I need to own it. Yes, so let's see where we are now. Yes, we are done all with this question already. Okay, so I'll move on to a different question. question. What? Uh, why we use 5 MPA? I can't hear you. Can you come again? Uh, why we use 5 MPA? Uh, the last question. Previous, previous question. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, you mean this question? Can you see the slide now? Uh, no, sir. Wait. Can you see the slide? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So your question is why we use what? Why we yes. use 5 MPA? For the last question. 5 MPA for compressed liquid water. Why we use 5 MPA? Is it for uh, number one, two, for question number three? Yes. The last yes, part. The last part. <laughs> so which one did I use? Five MPA. There's no five MPA here. Interpolation method. You mean the interpolation? Yes, sir. Oh. No, uh, the interpolation, we are supposed to use, no, we didn't, uh, we are not supposed to use five MPA. We are supposed to use this, 2.5. Did you use five MPA? The values are for 5 MPA, sir. But in yes, property sir. tables, it shown 5 MPA, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you, Aima, you use 5 MPA? Yes, sir. Oh, no. It is wrong, Then We are supposed to use 2.5 MPA. So if you use 2.5 MPA, there's no 180 degrees. Oh, I see. Okay, so whatever the issue is, just leave this question. I'll go back to it again, and then I'll give you the solution. Okay? okay. Uh -huh. So we should not waste time over it. So cancel the third question. So um, I'll look for it. I'll try to give you the solution some, um, maybe some other time. But we are not supposed to use 5 MPA. It's supposed to be 2.5 MPA. You understand me? Okay. Yes. For the interpolation, but and then I will discuss the way we do about the go about the interpolation, or whatever the issue is. If you do not find, let's say, if you don't find the, uh, there is, don't they have pressure for 2.5? Do you have pressure for 2.5 in the table? No, is, sir. Huh? No, sir. No, no, sir. So yes. what is the what is the highest pressure over there? Fifty MPA. How much? Come again. Fifty MPA, sir. Okay. So I am, like I was telling you, I think let us suspend this question. I'll move to a different question. I'll try and find a solution for you later on. Okay? 
Okay, so, now let's move on to our slide. So still on chapter two. Oh, I'm coming. I'm just looking for a different question, and then we will discuss now. Yes. So this is part of the examples you have in your lecture notes. So, Ima, can you see this question? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, let us discuss this question now. Here we are told that a rigid vessel contains, so, contains steam at 1.4 megapascal and 250 degrees Celsius. It is then cooled until the temperature drops to, to sorry, 120 degrees Celsius. At the final stage, determine the pressure, the quality, the specific enthalpy. Also show the process on the TV diagram with respect to saturation lines. So here we have a, a rigid vessel. So rigid vessel is this. We have a rigid vessel. And this rigid vessel it contains pressure equals to 1.4. MPA and then temperature equals to 250 degrees Celsius. It is then cooled. So cooling means that there is some amount of heat rejection. Okay. 
So this is step one of the system. So the moment you pull it down, some of the properties of the fluid is going to change. Temperature is going to change, pressure is going to change, but we are told that the final temperature at stage two is 120 degrees Celsius. So now at stage two, we'll have a situation like this. So T2 equals to 120 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, at the final stage, determine the pressure. So we want to find P2. And then we want to find the quality. What is the value for X2? And also the specific entropy. What is U? These are the things we need to determine. So for this type of question, first thing we need to determine what type of fluid are we talking about. So the type of fluid is steam. So it is steam. So one thing you need to know, steam, water, or saturated vapor, it is not an ideal gas. So we cannot use ideal gas equation to handle this type of question. Okay, so we are looking for the final pressure. Now, I've told you, in order to solve this type of question, we need to determine two independent intensive properties. That will help us to determine all other properties. So we know temperature as stage two already, but we don't know the pressure. If we know these two, then we can easily determine X and U. So we need to borrow a property which is common. We need to borrow a property which is common to both state one and state two. So if we look carefully, we are told this is a rigid vessel. So a rigid vessel implies that rigid. Sorry. Uh, so a rigid vessel implies the initial volume and then the final volume are what? Say, so we will have V1, so rigid vessel implies V1 equals to V2. Okay? So now we need to go back to state one. At state one, we know P1, 1.4 megapascal, T1, 250 degrees Celsius. So we don't know what is this, the state of this fluid. So we need to find the specific volume that corresponds to this state. But we need to know what is the state of this volume. We are only told that a rigid vessel contains steam. What type of steam is it? Is it stupidated steam? Is it compressed? Or is it saturated liquid vapor? Whatever it is. Okay? So here, again, we will determine the T saturation. So T saturation at 1.4 megapascal equals to, so that gives me how much? What is P saturation, sorry, T saturation at 1.4 MPA. What will be the result? One nine five point zero four. One nine. Hmm? 5.04. 5.04. Okay, thank you very much. And so this is in degree Celsius. So now, uh, if we compare this temperature and then the given temperature, so we can conclude that T is greater than T saturation. So T1 is greater than T saturation. So this implies superheated. 
to superheated, superheated steel. So if this is superheated steel, then we need to go to the superheated table and look for the specific volume. So you go to the table, so uh, specific volume, V1 equals what? At a superheated table. Zero point one six three. How much? Zero point one six. One six. Yes, three five six. Three five six. Okay, so meter cube per kg. All right. So now we have been able to determine U one. Okay. So sorry, V1. We have been able to determine V1. We don't know the mass of the fluid. So what? You said what? Uh, <laughs> So, any problem? So, we will have the specific volume at state one equals to specific volume at state two. So, now we move on to state two. At state two, specific volume V2 equals to 0 0.16356 meter cube per kilogram. And then we have uh, T2 as well, equals to 120. So T2. equals to 120 degrees Celsius. So these are the properties of the fluid we have at stage two. So now we need to find the final, final pressure, then the value for X, then the value for U. So it seems to me that the final state is saturated liquid vapor mixture. But however, we can determine that. Okay, so how do we do, do that? By simply determining Vf at 120 degrees Celsius and then Vg at 120 degrees Celsius. So please give me these values. So go to the property. Go to the property table. What is UF and UG? So V right, okay. No, no not V. U. U UF. UF and UG. UF. Yes. Oh sorry. Yes, we compare v, with V right. Yes, yes. So VF will compare VF and VG with this V. Yes. So V at 120 yes. degree, VF, VF equal to 0 0.001. 0 0.001. 060. 060. Okay. Thank you. Then... Zero uh, for VG. Yes. Zero eight zero point eight nine. Zero point eight nine. One three three. One three three. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so now we compare with this specific volume. Okay, we discover that V, sorry, uh, V2 is greater than Vf, but less than Vg. So this implies the fluid is saturated liquid vapor mixture. Okay? So if this is the case, then what is going to be the, uh, the pressure at that state? So we are looking for pressure. So I'll use PV diagram to this. So, so this is my constant temperature line. So that means that the pressure that corresponds to this. So we imagine the fluid is here. It's in the saturated liquid vapor mixture. So we look for P saturation value. So it implies P equals to P saturation at uh, 120 degrees Celsius. So what is P saturation? Tell me. Yes. One nine eight. One nine eight. Point six seven. Point six seven. So kilopascal. Okay. So now we'll look for the the internal energy. So internal energy U equals to U F plus X U G minus U F. Okay. So now we need to determine the value for X. So now we can determine X from V. Sorry. So it is like this. V2 equals to Vf X Vg minus Vf. So X equals to V2. We know V2 already. Move it to, to be yes, zero point one six three five six. Minus VF. Minus VF. So that gives us zero point zero zero one zero six zero. 0 0.001067. Okay. Then divided by, oh sorry, 60. This should be 60. This should be 60. So all divided by U G, sorry V G. So v G that gives us zero point eight nine. Zero point eight nine one three three nine zero point one zero six zero. So can somebody find X for us? Zero point one eight. Five. 
Okay, so now we will substitute into this equation. We we'll substitute that into this equation. I'll have u plus two. What is uf? uf at 120 degrees Celsius. Yes, what is UF at 120 kilopascal? Yes. Yes. What is UF? The value for UF. I'm waiting for you. UF at 120 kilopascal. 503.6. Zero three point six plus we know the value for x zero point one eight two five times and then UG. What is UG? Two five two eight point nine. Two five two eight point nine minus UF again. Five zero three point six. Okay, so this gives us the final value for u equals to Eight seven three point two one. Eight what? Eight seven three point two one. Two. Sorry. Point two. Two. Okay. Thank you. Kilo juice. Thank you. All right. So now the final question says we should catch the TV diagram with respect to saturation lines. Okay, so very simple TV diagram with respect to saturation lines. Here is it. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the temperature, this is the specific volume. Our initial state was in the superheated state, right? So we determine, let's say this is superheated. And then the final state is in the saturated liquid vapor mixture. But let's look. And uh, this is a rigid vessel. So for a rigid vessel, the volume remains the same. You understand? The volume does not change. So the volume is constant. So that over here, if you have V1, it's the same as V2. OK? 
Okay? So, and since heat is being rejected, you see, we have the rigid vessel over heat is being rejected. So it means the temperature over here will be decreasing from T1 up to T2. So that means that we have to go vertically downwards into the saturated liquid vapor mixture. So this is state one, and this is state two. If, let's say, somebody decides to draw it like this, somebody will say, say, why can't we draw it like this? If you draw it like this, this is state one, this is state two, this means that the volume is decreasing. You understand me? So you cannot move from the task to be vertically downwards. So it means that V1 and V2, they are the same. So this is the TV diagram with respect to this question. Okay? So I think we will stop over here. And then we will continue with chapter 3. And when I'll finish it, boundary work, then I'll look into the final year exam questions. Okay? So then we'll solve some questions. And then... Uh, hopefully, uh, we can come back to Shalom again and start our face-to-face -face discussion. Okay, so uh, is there any question? So now? No, sir. Okay, so if there is no question, then we will give about three to five minutes. Okay, so just a few tasks before we leave. Okay.